Hey guys, it's Two Review Games or Adam, and welcome back to another one of my Fortnite top five videos. But before we get into the video, I want to remind you guys the last chance to enter into my Christmas gift card giveaway. To enter, it's really easy. All you have to do is drop a like on today's video, and then let me know in the comment section below what level are you currently in Fortnite Battle Royale. So in today's top five, we're gonna be going over five things that bad players do here in Fortnite Battle Royale, and there really isn't much more to say than that. If you guys want to see more Fortnite Top 5s, make sure to sub to the channel, I'd appreciate that. And besides that, let's go ahead and start off today's list. So coming in at the number 5 spot on my list, bad players do not understand the rarity scale here in Fortnite Battle Royale. And I don't know if you guys have ever watched some people loot, but you'll have like a, a blue AR and a green AR beside each other, and the person will come up to the loot pile and they'll take the green AR and they'll leave the blue one, or you're end game and you're, you know, 5 people left, you kill some Somebody and they have a green AR and a grenade. It's like, what are you doing for the entire game if you only have a green AR? It's, it's crazy, but there are players out there, bad players, who do not understand the rarity scale in this game. And don't worry, I'll go over them for you right now. So the rarity scale in Fortnite Battle Royale goes like this. You have gray, which is common. You'll have green, which is uncommon. You'll have a blue, which is rare. You'll have Epic, which is purple, and then you'll have Legendary, which is orange, and Legendary is the top tier in Fortnite Battle Royale. You always want to get those orange weapons. But the biggest mistake that I see bad players always making is they will always take greens over blues, and especially when it comes to, you know, the blue burst or a blue M16, they are so incredibly good, especially that blue burst. It's way better than the green burst, and with the M16 as well, you know, players consider the blue M16 to be better than the purple scar, so make sure you understand your rarity scale whenever you're looting. So coming in at the number four spot, bad players never build in this game. Now what I mean by that is not necessarily at the end of the game when there's 10 people left, you don't have to build this absolutely crazy epic fort that reaches into space. I'm just talking about building in general, building in situations that can protect you and keep you alive longer. But of course, building at endgame is also important and a lot of fun. But I remember when I first started playing Fortnite, I would really never take advantage of the building in this game. When I'd be getting shot at in the back or just getting shot at, I would try to turn on the person, try to get a headshot, and sometimes it worked, but most of the time I ended up dying because I didn't build. So whenever you're playing Fortnite and you're getting shot, at, especially at a distance, the first thing you want to do is build. Don't try to react and kill the person. Always build first because that is going to keep you alive a lot longer. Now, there are some situations where, you know, shooting first is important. Like if, if the person's close range and you have a shotgun out, absolutely. Go for the shot, try to kill them because you can't really build in those situations sometimes. But at long range, always, always build if you're getting shot at. Put a square around you, heal up if you need to, you know, drop down some stairs and you instantly have a height advantage and you'll definitely stay alive a lot longer if you just build before you shoot and react. Now, of course, when it comes to end game, building is always really, really important. Now, sometimes it's kind of a double-edged sword because if there's five left or 10 left, you're giving away your position. But at the same time, if you know what you're doing when it comes to building and you build a really big base, at the end of the day, you're going to have cover and protection against the person who does not build and they're just out in the open. So coming in at the number three spot on my list, people who camp in bushes. My gosh, this is incredibly annoying and frustrating because in order for that player to do good, they have to camp inside bushes. Now, I know sometimes it's actually a good strategy. There are times where I'm running on the open and for example, I have to heal, right? And I have nowhere else to go. So I'll go into a bush because at least I might be able to kind of sneak by or get out of that situation because no one can see me inside the bush. So I'll quickly go in the bush, heal up, and then I'll be on my way. But if you sit in the bush, the entire game and that's the only way you can get a top 10 I'm sorry but you're a bad player now having that bush ghillie suit in game it doesn't really help at all just being able to put that on wherever you want and you actually move as a bush it can be really annoying now I understand that it kind of impairs your vision you can't really see as well but at the same time there are some people who will absolutely just sit in one spot and camp there and as soon as they have to move they'll quickly move and then sit in the spot again 
and sometimes you'll never even notice them. The most frustrating thing, hands down, about bush campers, and I think everybody can relate to this, is when you're doing really, really well in a match, like your top 5 or top 10, top 15, you have a bunch of kills, you're absolutely killing it, you have a good chance of winning the game, and you get killed by somebody camping in the bush that probably has zero kills, and the only reason why they are alive is because they have been sitting in that damn bush the entire match. So coming in at the number two spot on my list, if you guys thought bush campers were bad, tree campers are even more infuriating. Now we all occasionally end up in trees sometimes when playing Fortnite, it just happens, sometimes it just, that situation, you end up in a damn tree, that's okay, but those players who go tree hopping from tree to tree the entire game just so they can stay alive is one of the most infuriating things ever and that right there is a bad player. The most common situations when it comes to tree campus for myself is whenever I'm moving up to the safe zone or maybe I'm in the safe zone and I'm moving up on somebody else or I'm just trying to find a secure position and all of a sudden I get shot at and I have no idea where you first look around you look on the ground is there anybody here no and you continue to get shot at you build you try to protect yourself and little do you know that there is somebody sitting in one of the trees and the worst part of it all is it's so hard to see them especially if they're like right above you it's nearly impossible to see them because just their head is peeking out and if they crouch they are completely invisible and dying by these guys it just makes you want to delete the game so coming in at the number one spot on my list the one thing that bad players do every single game and it is completely avoidable and that is looting right away after killing somebody and I think some of the easiest ways to get kills in Fortnite is to use loot as a trap because those bad players they cannot resist and can you blame them when I first started playing Fortnite and I killed somebody and I saw they dropped a purple or a gold scar I couldn't resist I had to go up and grab that scar right away but little did I know someone was waiting for me to go ahead and grab that scar and they killed me and they got both a scar and my loot so never ever ever loot right away after killing somebody now I'm not saying that you should never loot right away after killing somebody because in some situations you have to if you are on the edge of the storm and it's closing in on you and you killed somebody they dropped a gun you want you might as well grab it right away because if you don't you're probably gonna die with the storm anyways but if you're in a populated area or you're in a town you know there's people nearby and you killed somebody who had a good gun why not use that loot as bait because there's always going to be those players who see a good gun or a gun that's better than theirs and they will run straight towards it and they don't even think about if there's other people nearby using that loot as bait and that's such an easy way to get kills so after killing somebody just think twice before looting it right away. Now the exact same thing applies for supply drops because supply drops are even more tempting to go for them right away because they usually guarantee a gold gun and it's so common for players to just charge at a supply drop because they want that good loot and there are times where a supply drop lands in a really odd spot or where it's on the edge of the storm or, or the circle and you think there's no way in hell that somebody is here and you go up to it and somebody's waiting for you and they kill you or you know you kill somebody going for the supply drop and there's gonna be a bunch of people nearby waiting for it because you want that good loot you want that gold gun so for loot and supply drops just hold off for a bit and I guarantee you you'll definitely get a lot more kills and survive a lot longer well that's gonna conclude like the main things that bad players do here in Fortnite Battle Royale now I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I wanted to throw in here at the end of the video the first one is bad players have really bad inventory management so obviously you have all of your slots at the bottom of your screen and Bad players will have their AR, then they'll have a shield, a grenade, you know, a medkit, and then other weapons. What you want to have is you want to have all your weapons on one side, and then everything else on the other side, so you can quickly switch between your shotgun, your AR, your sniper, whatever weapons you have, you want to have quick access to them and not have them all messed up in your inventory. Last but not least, guys, bad players absolutely love rushing this game like they are playing on Call of Duty, and this is not COD, guys. Fortnite is not COD. You 
you have to be a little bit more strategic when you are rushing in this game and I always find bad players running into houses, spraying with their shotgun or with their AR, just hoping, praying they'll get the kill and most of the time they'll end up dying because they really don't know what they're doing and they think they're playing COD. So there you have it guys, those were seven things that bad players do here in Fortnite Battle Royale, well, I guess five things and then two honorable mentions. If you guys enjoyed today's video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe for more Fortnite top five videos and if you guys want to see another part of this, please let me guys know in the comment section below and besides that, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.